does healthy narcissism exist? Normally we associate bad meanings when we hear the word narcissism or narcissist. But do we actually need narcissism in our life? Hi, my name is Patricia. I'm counseling psychologist registered with HCPC here in the UK. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the narcissism that we actually need in our life. So we all, we must have um, seen, observed, um, or maybe we have in our family, a little child who's really playful and loving and caring and sweet and cuddly. But then at the same time, their emotions, they can change really instantly and they can um, start kicking, they can even start biting, they can become really angry, demanding, frustrated with their parents. So they can become very impulsive, they can challenge their parents with the tantrums. And this really wide spectrum of emotions that occur naturally in little children. And that is actually needed um, for children at that early stage of their life in order for them to develop into the person that they're going to become later in life. Because of the narcissism, children they can actually express if they have any physical or maybe any emotional needs, especially at the stage of their life when they still cannot maybe speak fully. So um, in situations when maybe we ignore a child, the child will express what we would see as exaggerated a version of maybe anger or frustration. And as well, in addition, they really need to feel safe at this very early stages of their life. It's very crucial for their normal development. And all of these things are actually really needed. So all these tantrums, uh, seeking attention, seeking safeness from the parents, are really needed for these small children at this very early stages of their life in order for them to learn how to respond emotionally to other people uh, in order to know how to regulate their own emotions. So with help of loving parent, the child can then develop a healthy, secure attachment and this ability of being emotionally competent and that loving um, attachment and um, that they develop with the parent is actually teaching them how to distribute the attention between themselves and other people and obviously it is a wish of every parent that they will raise a child that they will have a very balanced sense of entitlement that means that they will be able to maintain their own self of worth and not sacrificing who they are for other people and also that they're gonna be able to guard their boundaries in context um, of being respected and also that they're gonna be able to respect other people therefore we can say that parenting it is actually a very difficult task to do and uh, so being able to complete all of these that we just mentioned here but then at the same time perhaps juggling your own emotional unmet issues from childhood and then as well being able to be attuned with this very unique and specific needs of that specific child. Daniel Siegel, he actually said that in order for parents to become more effective at parenting, it is actually quite crucial to become more aware of uh, what has happened in their own childhood. So create some kind of a coherent story narrative uh, uh, formulation, because that can actually help with uh, then parents modeling um, emotions and behaviors to the child and as well it can help with being more emotionally attuned with that child. So there's actually research indicating that parents who actually have this coherent formulation or narrative of their childhood, they actually have a better chances at offering loving and skillful discipline to their children. So for instance, Wendy Bihari, she said that um, in those relationships where parent and a child are well uh, emotionally attuned, actually shame can be quite important aspect of discipline. And this type of discipline then can help to um, negotiate this give and take notion, can also help with uh, teaching the child the family values and also uh, teaching the child about their responsibilities. But all that can be done within the boundaries of uh, this well-attuned relationship between the parent and the child so that the child doesn't feel like they're being put down 
or maybe they feel like there's something uh, really wrong with them or maybe that they are bad the ideal goal here it is to create that uh, surrounding within schools and home where the child actually can develop their individual self uh, considering uh, you know the friends family the society this necessary narcissism is really important it helps us to be vocal about our intentions and needs purposes while being also sensitive to other people around us and also because of this healthy narcissism we are able to develop this secure attachment with other people so now thinking about the healthy adult narcissism wendy biharis she said that we can actually imagine someone who's really famous but who at the same time actually makes a positive change um, to wider society or even uh, in a word. So people who actually have characteristics of the healthy adult narcissism, they might actually went through some maybe trauma in their childhood. They might actually not receive um, all the necessary aspects of uh, loving and caring uh, parenting when growing up. So perhaps with the help of therapy, maybe self-reflection, maybe they actually later in life they had this uh, um, relationship where they were able to develop a more secure attachment and maybe they've developed that attachment with a teacher maybe with some mentor or maybe with even a parent of their friend and then because of that that actually allowed them to uh, have this uh, healthy narcissism so very often uh, we can see that people who are actually really famous they exhibit some forms of maladaptive uh, narcissism not all of them obviously some of them but they're gonna be also um, many famous people who are actually well adjusted and who exhibit the forms of the healthy narcissism so what is different about uh, famous people is that they normally they exhibit this a uh, higher level of uh, self-esteem and this uh, better skills at dealing with other people and, and then when the bihari she actually gives a list of uh, and uh, different characteristics of the adult healthy narcissism so the first one it is that they are empathic means they are well emotionally attuned with other people and they're also engaging means they're emotionally intelligent they can really sense what the other person is feeling and based on that they respond they're charismatic and sociable the next one it is leadership so they have the vision of you know where the plan is gonna go and how they're gonna get there and they're going to be able as well to direct other people to help them to get to that uh, goal. And then we have a self-possess. And that means they are confident and committed to being actually who they are. To express their true self. So recognition seeking is the next one. And that is about them being motivated by positive recognition and then using that to make positive change, maybe helping someone. And then they also, they seem to be more determined. So the setbacks are actually not such a big deal for them. So the next one, it is being assertive. So when someone does something, they will actually make sure that they are accountable for what they did wrong but they will do it without actually putting someone down or humiliating someone that's what the actual narcissists they do they humiliate people they putting them down and the last one it is wisely fearful that means that they can go and ask for help without actually using some destructive behaviors and threats so yes if you enjoyed this video then please like it subscribe and i'm gonna see you in the next one then thank you bye bye